All right guys, this video has been made for anyone who's interested in Panasonic's Lumix S1 camera and specifically its low light performance. So if you want to find out if it's any good or you want to check if the dual native ISO performs as expected or if you simply like the sound of my voice, then this video is for you. Last year, I upgraded from the Lumix GH5 to the Lumix S1 because I wanted to have improved low light performance. And given the S1's full frame sensor, this was a natural expectation. So this week, I decided to test this camera out in a fair and controlled environment to see how far this camera can be pushed. To make this test as fair as possible, I set up a small area to film on my dining table and using an Aperture 120D Mark II and a small reflector board on the side, I recorded the same shot 18 different times to compare the following. The performance of different ISOs, including its two native ISOs within the S1, the performance of both a natural profile and a V-log profile, and the performance of V-log captured at different exposure settings, which was a third of a stop and two stops overexposed. For anyone interested in the camera settings, I shot this at 4K 25p in 10-bit 422, with a 5600 Kelvin white balance, a shutter angle of 180 degrees, and shot at f6.3. As I increase the ISO level on these tests, I decrease the intensity of my key light in order to reach the same exposure throughout. Therefore, you might see slight differences in terms of the intensity of the light in some of these shots. However, I've tried to rectify this as much as possible within the grade. And with that, I color corrected each of the shots to match the original footage at 640 ISO in the natural profile to ensure a fair comparison each time. So let's start with the performance of just the natural profile. Personally, I'm very impressed, especially with the performance of those with the higher ISO values. 12,800 is still relatively clean, but if we do scale in, you can clearly see some detail loss here. Maybe a small amount of noise, but it's important to recognize that this is scaled in at 300%. So realistically, we wouldn't be doing this. This is mostly just for testing purposes. And secondly, it's still way less noise than I anticipated, considering we're talking about four and a third stops of exposure between the two ISO values. Now let's compare the natural profile to V-Log which were all shot with the same camera setting, so not taking into consideration the one or two stops of overexposure you're meant to do when shooting lock. Now 640 ISO seems to produce the same results as the natural profile, and also shows very little noise when it's even ungraded. Now this is expected anyway because 640 ISO is the base ISO when shooting in V-Log on the S1. As we work our way up these ISO values, to me, there isn't a huge difference until you reach around 2,500 ISO. Now, if we quickly compared the 2,500 ISO shot in V-Log to the 640 ISO shot in the natural profile, you can see more noise, especially on the darker side of the Xbox controller. There's some noise creeping in on the gray wall in the background, but to be fair, on the majority of the midtones and highlights within this, it's still very minimal noise. And again, not noticeable when we scale back out to 100%. Now let's quickly look at what Panasonic claimed to be its dual native ISO values, which is 640 and 4000 ISO. If we compare them both at 100% scale, it looks like it could be the same clip. If we quickly scale into 300% again, you can see that those shadows are a little noisier at 4000 ISO, which does raise the question to me of if that dual native ISO of the S1, which was made apparent by Panasonic with the upcoming firmware update, are actually identical in performance. However, considering that this isn't properly exposed footage, comparing to how we are meant to expose log footage, which is one or two stops over, it's still performing pretty well. Let's quickly show you 6400 before now moving on to 12,800 ISO in V-Log. There's definitely more noise in the green shadows of my fake plant, but to compare that against 12,800 in the natural profile, it's only a marginal amount of added noise, which could easily be fixed with noise reduction if you wanted to. To make this fair, now I'll show you properly exposed log footage, which is two stops over, and let's compare with that. 640 ISO is squeaky clean, and the same pretty much applies to both 1000 and 2500 ISO. At 4000, you can start to see noise in the shadows on things such as the, the handle of the red music quiz box, when scaled into 300% again. But when looking at this normally again at 100%, the performance is still fantastic. With pretty much all areas of this shot easily allowing me to scale up to 200% without introducing much noise. 
Now finally at 12,800 ISO, whilst the noise performance is still impressive, there is a significant detail loss, especially if we refer to the Xbox controller. To me, you just can't see that graininess that you get on the controller as much. It's pretty clear and expected to say that there's less noise in 12,800 in the natural profile than there is the vlog. So maybe just bear that in mind, depending on what you're shooting. I wanted to make sure that this video was straight to the point and not too subjective. So I'm not personally going to give much of an opinion on the performance of this, but you guys can feel free to drop a comment below and let me know how you feel that it's performed. I appreciate I could have pushed the camera a little bit more, maybe up to 50,000 or 100,000 ISO. However, I wanted this test to be as realistic as possible and use the settings that the majority of S1 owners would realistically use. It's also important for me to stress that a low light performance test of a camera can't necessarily accommodate for every single shooting scenario that you might have with this camera. For instance, this test was shot with one large light source bouncing down at the subject. I've even shot at weddings where I've had to crank this up to 12,800 ISO and the performance has been completely different. But that would have been because my subjects either weren't lit or there was a lot more shadows within the frame of what I was shooting. For me, this test was just assuring that if I need to shoot a high ISO value in a controlled environment, I can do. I hope you enjoyed this quite scientific geeky video. And if you did, be sure to like and subscribe for more videos like this. And as always, in the meantime, take care and I'll see you very soon. Oh, that was creepy. I'll see you soon.